All right, uh, Commissioner Sveska. Present. All right. Commissioner Holm. Present. Commissioner Bruno. Here. Uh, Chair Costello. Here. Commissioner Scovich. Here. Commissioner Gormley Barnes. Here. And um, Commissioner Tanzillo. Here. Here uh, via phone. All right, we have a quorum. Okay, if everybody please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first item tonight is uh, the approval of the minutes from the October 5th meeting. Commissioners, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Any corrections or modifications on that that you'd like to suggest? Not by me. Hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Dan moves to approve. Any second? I'll second. Danielle, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes are approved. And tonight we're going to start the public hearings on the um, um, shed variances in the uh, Bartlett area. And our first petitioner, let's see, first commissioners, did you get all the materials and were you able to review them? And do you have any questions on the materials? Okay. Our first petitioner is uh, Louis Roski. Um, he would like a special use permit for a detached shed that currently exists in a, and uh, it's a nonconforming structure. Uh, Mr. Roski has completed all the materials and submitted them and uh, has gathered signatures of his neighbors stating that they do not object to the placement of the current shed. Uh, he's provided a plat of survey um, and uh, zoning, we have uh, given notice to everybody in the area, correct? Okay. Um, Mr. Rawls, do you have any words to say? I guess there you are. Not really. I've been talking for 16 <laughs> months about this thing. So yeah, okay. You stop by today, which I appreciate. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. you all know we need them. Yeah. The only thing you can do is I didn't bring a picture of the inside, which was no room. No, it's Half fine. The stuff would have fallen on her head if she'd have walked in. Yeah. But okay. Thank you. you guys all right. For thank out. you. Yeah, we have talked about this a whole lot, and I think um, uh, we as a board have a much better idea of where we're headed with this whole project. Um, any questions, commissioners, or comments you want to make at this time? Uh, note the staff recommendations. Uh, the staff recommends that we uh, recommend approval for the variance um, and special use permit. Uh, we would like to um, be sure that there's screening, proper screening, and um, uh, and that uh, the petitioner pay makes the payment for the um, mailings. Um, yeah, any questions or comments or discussion? The mailings. Could you um, shed some light on what that is? In, in lieu of the uh, fee, the, the uh, application fee, which is fairly steep, and given that this is an unusual circumstance where we have a lot of people petitioning at once to uh, get become in compliance with the... Um, with our ordinance. Um, we're waiving that large fee, however, we are passing along the cost of mailing. We had a mail notice to everybody in the area in order for this, to have this hearing. Let everybody know that we're here. Did we get any negative um, letters or anything? No, no, we haven't received any. And, and to kind of go a little more into the mailing, we're required um, by law to send uh, notices out regarding zoning hearings 
yeah, in, including this one. And so we, we had to send letters out to everyone within 250 feet, and that excludes roads. And so just based on the positioning of the subdivision, that includes sending letters to all of Wilshire condos, uh, some of Countryside, uh, and the LaGrange Highlands. So it ended up being about $90 per per um, homeowner that's part of the process. So Okay. This would be great. When it's all over, we'll have everybody you know, at least in compliance with the village. Greg, do you have a comment? Um, Mr. Roski, how long have you lived at the residence? 22 years. 22 years. And when was the, um, when was this subdivision annexed into Indian Head Park? Does anybody know? Um, I think, I want to say maybe 68. Oh, so long before you were... And I see. Well, when you guys, I, I believe that I'm not 100 percent sure, but somewhere around there, I believe. Great. And I see there's a your your structure sitting on a concrete pad. Was there a? It's not a concrete pad. I have a box. Mm -hmm. The book says you could put it either on. Uh, or either could put it on um, pea gravel. You can put it on like I, mine is lined up with two by tens all the way around it. It sits on that. Plus there's a rubber pad that goes over. Okay. So it's and a package. It's kind of bolted down to the. Uh, it's a packaged structure unit. Yeah. And do you have a basement? No. Okay. None of these homes in here do have a basement. Terrific. In Bartlett, we're all on slabs, with most of them one car garages. A few people have two, but mostly one. And then what's your plan for screening? Well, I'm gonna get either argivites or I'm gonna, you know, some bushes I've got in the front. I can't remember the name of them. Boxwood. That's it. <laughs> gotcha. All you know. I got three sides to cover. Well, I can't cover the front, so the, the two door. other sides sure. will be here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could sneak through, you know, get the chainsaw out then and cut them down. But yeah, you know. What, uh, Andy? This might be a question for you, but what do we have available to us to make sure that the screening is put in place the way Mr. Rowski described? Yeah. So it's a good question and. Um, we we talked a little bit about this, but before. But the plan right now, I think, would be uh, as one of the criteria or conditions for granting the special use and the variance, uh, other than the pay, paying of the bulk fee, would be the screening, and that would include um, six months from now, or maybe even in the middle of summer next year after they after all the residents have had time to actually do the plant things not in the because you can't do it obviously in the winter um, that village code enforcement we have a code enforcement uh, inspector who would just we would schedule uh, a little follow-up inspection just to go see and make sure that the screenings up like uh, like agreed to and um, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So, and and that wouldn't be hard. We have a part-time code enforce enforcer um, enforcement person, and so we could just schedule those in the summer next year and um, just follow up. Uh, this would be a good opportunity, I think, to have a little discussion um, since um, this is our shed that we're looking at now, of course, and there's no uh, screening except in the back on this one. Uh, as a commission, why don't we talk about what would be our ideal? And I don't think we have to stick with this and expect mature trees and you know and by spring around here. <laughs> but maybe as a, a panel, we can talk about what, like ideally, uh, what would we like this to look at, and that would be our ideal, and not necessarily what we mandate. Any comments? I think high start. enough where you would cover the whole side of the shed, right? So the bushes that are, that grow, I mean, they don't necessarily have to be full size right away, but at least half the size or three quarters. And then, so when you do see it from the side, you don't, you just see yeah. the trees, maybe the peak of the roof, right? That's all you'd see, but. Yeah. Like, hostas won't do it, right? <laughs> Something, I mean, I would envision, like, it'd be great if there were some nice mature trees all around there. Again, we're not gonna expect that to happen. Um, Certainly not right away, but I. Um, like what the arborvitae is, and it's, an, it's an evergreen. It's yeah. it's going to grow vertically, yeah. and as long as they're spaced appropriately, it, that's a, that's a perfect solution, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, should something that is an evergreen be part mm -hmm. of the requirement? I mean, 
well, if we're talking about screening, we're talking about year-round screening, yeah. right? Not well, just let's talk about ideals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, ideally, from my perspective, that's what that would include. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a boxwood, something like that. Yeah, I mean, those those maintain leaves throughout the year. So yeah. Or the yeah. harder bites, which grow yeah. taller oh, too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, the only thing with those is they do tend to collapse on you during the winter. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. They're more maintenance, but other than that. Yeah. It's nice because mine is um, vinyl, you know, vinyl siding. So that just saves me from pressure washing it when it's kind of closed. You won't see the mold that forms every couple of years. But other than that, yeah, I have no problem with that. You so know, as you I think about your plan where, you know, something tall, uh, something um, that's not deciduous and, um, you know, kind of three, uh, three sides as much as possible. I, I yeah. suppose I would just be more interested in kind of what the deadline would be to make sure that right. people that are getting the variants are doing what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, you know, that's we are going to have primary concern based on the amount of time that you know everybody's spending to make this happen. Right. It would just make sense to oh, yeah. have kind of a hard deadline. Right. I would. I personally, and I've talked to everybody in our community about it. They all know about the three sides, everything. So we discuss it in trustee meetings and everything. Well, I am with them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a point of getting it down, like you said, what time? June, July 1st, something like that yeah. would be perfect. You know what I mean? That gives everybody enough time. I think so, because you got summer coming. You know, well, not now, mm -hmm. but in six, you know, three, five months, whatever. Okay. I've got no problem with it. Yeah, I, I didn't want to put them in this year because it got cold right away, and I didn't know what was going to happen till what last month or the month before when the trustees finally agreed to it you know and some people still gotta get a few we have you're gonna have them coming up four or five homes that still want them that don't even have them yet that just moved into the community so right that's gonna be an issue for, you know you guys you know i think that uh july one would be a good a good date to, to have it uh, have them all done by then and then in july one we'll start with the uh, inspections okay that's my recommendation and then uh, the village will just be following up on that okay very good what's the construction of your house my house exterior yeah is off frame I mean wood wood, wood siding wood siding and that's painted periodically yeah I wanted vinyl but over 20 some thousand <laughs> forget it and it's cheaper to you know <laughs> four gallons of top quality paint <laughs> And how old is this guy? My house? No, the... Oh, that shed's 12, 12 or 13 years old. It's a nice vinyl shed. Yeah, it's, it, they last. And like I said, all you have to do every other year is just pressure wash. You even a garden hose with a little bit of soap and water. Dawn cleans it right up quick. So, you know. And it then, doesn't move. Andy, all the petitioners tonight are without basements in their primary residence? I believe so, but we'll we'll find out for sure uh, when they come on up. <laughs> I believe so on this list that I can see. I don't know if there's any here. Might be one, maybe. But. And what did the board hear? You said you were in front of the board last yeah. month? Well, we were discussing like 12 by 12 by 10. They agreed to that. That's supposedly they agreed to it and voted on it. That's the height and width. Mine's only an 8 by 10. Mine's a lot smaller. You know, you always ask for more and see what happens. You settle for less, but I ask for more, you know, because a few people have more stuff than me. They have getting kids. They have kids and toys and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, that's why I went high and see what they do, and they agreed. So I'm not going to turn it down. You hand me 100, I'm going to take it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So Andy is is, is obviously the board hasn't seen anything specific no specific petitions but generally speaking the idea of a detached structure under certain circumstances the board is supportive of is that fair? yes yeah so uh, i think it was back in may or june a few months ago they passed uh the board passed a 
a uh, shed ordinance specifically related to granting special uses for sheds and that kind of laid out some of the guidelines based off of recommendations from this commission uh, one of which was the 12 by 12 by 10 uh, and so the board essentially made it a lot easier to get a special use um, approved for a shed um, so I, I would say yes the board is is definitely um, more open uh, to to the to the petitioners great and that Thanks was for the whole history. Indian Head Park not just our community just to let you know so and forgive me Andy was that in the context of existing sheds or are we uh, ex not exposing ourselves but are, are, is it is it likely that we may see people applying for permits for uh, new sheds we probably will Yes, uh, the the ordinance applies to all of the village, so uh, we we probably will. And I've actually already received one from somebody in um, in the old town area. Uh, I I let them know. Unfortunately, we got you know twenty ahead of them, but uh, yes. So we we probably will get some more petitions because the restrictions were eased up a, a bit. This reminds me a little bit, of, there was a time when um, decks, um, especially in Ashbrook, were, uh, we had to get variances for that. And our discussion was along the lines that, you know, people entertain more outside now, so we're kind of moving into a new, or maybe that cabana that we approved, you know, it's because times are a little bit different than they were years ago. So I think that was how, how the discussion was going. And And even, you know, Part of part of the uh, criteria or factors that c come into considering whether or not to grant a special use is things like storage space and and whatnot, and, and it just so happens that Bartlett homes, almost all of them, are built on slabs and they don't have basements and like Lou was saying, one car garages. So e even though the restrictions have been uh, eased some, it's still a case by case um, basis for anything that would would come before this commission and the board uh, regarding special uses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there's no more, there's only the one shed. That's all we have on this property. Um, okay, any other questions, concerns, any comments from the audience? Just one point of clarification. We're looking at four this evening. This first one that we're looking at is the, is the one where we would be approving both a special use and a variance because of the placement of the shed. The other three where it's sitting now is actually within the buildable area, which is what the new requirement Correct. is, right? And right. so any of these proposed sheds that come before us, there should be some sensitivity to where they're pro proposing to place it. It has to be within the buildable area. And because of the screening issue that you mentioned, how to orient it so that it's not visible from the street and you can screen it in such a way that it right. hides it from the street, that would be the ideal thing Good to propose, point. right? This one is there, it's facing forward, there's not facing much to be done forward, except try you really to can't see it from make the it look nice. Until you're almost halfway past my house, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So I, that's where I tried to put it where it would be hidden at to begin with years ago, because okay. I didn't really want anybody to look at it, and I didn't want to look at it even <laughs> going to the mailbox, you know. It's right, but the, the requirement that it be th screened on three sides, the intent mm. is yeah. that when you drive by, you don't right. notice it. So if someone is putting in, asking to put in a new one, they ought to, to yeah. hopefully think about where to place it and how to orient it so they can get into it and it's convenient, but it's also not obvious from the street what it is. And Good point, yeah, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, uh, did you consider any other placement of the shed? Not really, because it's far enough back because you don't want it real close because your yard, you saw my big yard. I kind of wanted it, everybody really did, almost everybody has them farther back mm -hmm. to you know, have your yard. Mm -hmm. My son was young when we moved in here, like baseball, mm -hmm. you know, hitting them ground balls, everything, playing and wiffle ball and all that kind of stuff we used mm -hmm. to do. So, you know, that was the reason that I got a patio in the back of my house too, a 15 by 15 patio sitting there, you know. I, I, I would. Mind. I would mention one other thing too is when the board passed the uh, ordinance regarding sheds, uh, they also added in uh, that special consideration be given for granting the special use and the variance for those who sh whose sheds already exist as long as 
the adjacent property owners have signed off, which all the petitioners here tonight and, and um, all of the petitioners of that we've received so far have gotten uh, signatures of their of their adjacent uh, neighbors okay. saying that they're okay with the placement, uh, et cetera. So okay. I, that's not a, I don't think that's a concern either that the resident or that the neighbors aren't happy because we got everyone signed, so. Great, good, good to know. And in okay. the beginning, when I started all this, when the village came out with this ordinance wanting to get rid of them, I had a petition which I gave Charlie Eck one copy. You guys should have got it year, months ago, over 16 months ago, that all of us signed a petition saying we wanted sheds and fences. We know, you know, that's what we, we agreed to. We all were happy because we, we were all happy. We had at the time, I think, 28 out of the 35 homes had sheds in there. You know what I mean? And maybe only six or seven had them cyclone fences. And then one with the cowboy, which the village approved because they're the ones that put it in for the lady, you know, mm -hmm. so. Okay, any further discussion? Um, and uh, how is the village gonna follow up on if when, when the inspection goes out? Are they gonna take pictures and let you look at them and see what's been done? Is that how that's gonna work? Yeah, so what we'll do is um, I'll, I'll sit down with our code enforcement agent and we'll, we'll go over the criteria and then uh, he will go out and he'll take some pictures and, and he'll, he'll, know, he'll know the requirements of screening, et cetera. And, um, and so he'll, he'll, he'll actually be able to talk to with the residents at the time if there's an issue and then also he'll take pictures um, just for um, records and for for the village administration and anyone else who's interested uh, on the commission or whatnot that wants to look at it, so. Okay, okay. And, and just for argument's sake, if um, the screening isn't put up for certain uh, sheds, then what? What, what would be our? Um it, there, sh it's a good question. So there, there's a variety of things we could do. I mean, I, of, at first we would definitely try to Co co op work with the resident. You, we we want to go straight to any kind of citation or anything like but we that. Couldn't, would we pull the variance? Or the yeah, it is, it, since it is a um, uh, condition, since it, if my recommendation is to pass it with that as a condition for for all of them, and if they don't meet the condition, then yes, they the, they're not granted. The yes, okay. yeah. Um. I am, uh, you know, these are unique circumstances given that they don't have uh, basements, but I am concerned about subsequent petitions coming through and us having higher expectations, especially if they do have, you know, basements or, or additional storage. Um, you know, similar, you brought it up, the cabana. Mm -hmm. Talk about a you know, we, we shot him down and then he came back with a foolproof plan that was a, you know, a, a terrific solution mm -hmm. and he pretty well conformed to what we asked him to do. So I just, uh, you know, I think we need to be prepared for some, mm -hmm. you know, some conversations that, that uh, could be a little tough yeah. in yeah. the future. Right, we're, we're gonna do our best to be very consistent and, you know, did you have a comment, John? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, for the public, I'm John DeRoche, I'm the village administrator. When the board passed the ordinance, um, some of the wording in the ordinance says that we, this is a special use and it's not granted for the mere convenience of the property owner and consideration must be given to the house construction, the type of construction, full partial basement or slab. And one of the reasons we are doing every case individually is so that you can take each case on its own merits and not do a blanket precedent setting um, situation for the granting of, of sh sheds in, in every case. So that's why we just didn't blanket a zoning change for the area to allow for sheds, each one is taken on an individual basis, not in totality. So I think the precedent setting threat is always there, 
but it is minimized by having every case individually voted, voted upon. And that was the intent of, of the village board when they passed the ordinance in June. And the zoning changes across the entire village or specific to this? For sheds, for sheds specifically, when we passed the amendment, and we had talked about this at planning and zoning too, but the nuance is every case has to be considered individually. And that's always been the case with variances and special uses. Mm -hmm. So I hope that puts your mind a little bit more at ease about granting individual variances. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna call everybody's attention to the last page of our packet, um, which is our criteria for granting variances. And um, so we kind of want to go through and make sure that this um, case complies with this, these criteria. Um, we want to be sure that this variance um, complies with the following. The plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. I think the unique circumstances is no storage area in a, in, um, in the home. Does everybody agree or is that? Um, yeah. uh, the variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. I would, what do you think of that? I would say because, for one, a lot of the uh, people there have sheds, for one thing. Um, uh, the particular physical surrounding shape and topographical conditions of the specific property involved would bring a particular hardship upon the owner as distinguished from a mere inconvenience, which is kind of the wording John just referred to, if the strict letter of the regulation were to be carried out. Any objection to that? Uh, the conditions upon which the petition for variation is based would not be applicable generally to other property within the same zoning classifications. Well, again, I would. I, I would say, you know, that, that might be the one that is kind of the most gray as to whether or not it applies, but my, my, my interpretation um, and recommendation would be based upon the ordinance passed by the Village Board of Trustees, I think that the language about giving special consideration, uh, if the homeowner, or if the adjacent homeowners are okay with it, would supersede some of these mm -hmm. where it might be more gray area. That's a good point. Uh, that, that, that is my uh, interpretation and, and recommendation. So. Yeah, right. Okay, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make money out of the property. Okay, um, the alleged- We didn't ask that question. We didn't ask that question. <laughs> How much is this gonna, is you gonna make off of this? <laughs> no electricity or water, you can't rent it out. No. <laughs> the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. We agree on that. Uh, the granting of the variation will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood in which the property is located. Do you agree? Uh, the proposed variation will not impair an adequate supply of light and air to adjacent property or substantially increase the danger of fire or otherwise endanger the public safety or substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. I think that's a, that's a given. So, okay, I feel like we've covered everything. Do you agree? Uh, if so, uh, we would like somebody to make a motion that we recommend to the board that we approve um, the special use and the variation of the petition for the property at 1704 West 65th Place. Motion to approve. That, that's, Just, this is blanket that with all of these, the condition is the screening be added. If oh it's, yeah, if it is Thank missing, you. of right? course. Oh, with some of them two already conditions, have it, but with, this one doesn't. Yeah, with two conditions. The condition being, how could I pass that? <laughs> with the condition being that um, appropriate screening be um, installed as soon as property uh, as soon as um, possible or practicable, and that the uh, the fee required for mailing be paid to the village. 
Those are the two conditions. Should we state the screening needs to be installed prior to July 1, 2020? Yeah, there will be a follow up. The, the, the village will then follow up and take whatever appropriate action. Okay. So, because even if it's installed by then, it might be two feet and we really want it. Yeah. You know, I mean, so if they install plants, that won't be a, pr you know, whatever. Uh, um, so the village will follow up on that, but that's the condition of our approval, of our recommendation to the board of approval. And then I just have a question about the bulk fee. Um, is the cost of the fee to the residents equal to the cost of the mailings? Yes, we, we just took the cost of the mailings and divided it evenly between everyone who, uh, who uh, submitted an application. All right, thank you. It does sting that we don't have a definition of screening because one person's opinion of screening may be different from another person's. Mm -hmm. So, um, is that arbitrary when, when, you know, if somebody did something, did an inadequate job and they come back to the village, what is their recourse if you say not good enough? If we say not good enough to yeah. the screening, then, we, I mean, we would work with them to try to improve it, but uh, like like uh, Commissioner Bruno was saying, if they don't cooperate, then we can take away the special, the, the granting of the special use, yeah. and then they become non-compliant, and... If they continue not to cooperate, we, we could go down the route of citation um, yeah. or something like that. Hopefully not, but yeah, um, but yeah then they would lose it. And uh, in regards to the definition of screening, there is no definition right now. Um, you can recommend one. We do have, there is a little bit of precedence in the code for, like, uh, example, a commercial vehicle. Uh, I believe it's 75% screened, uh, like the height of whatever you have to screen like a boat or uh, some kind of commercial vehicle in your backyard so you, you could set it at 75 percent with a, or recommend that um, it's is really up to the commission and the board so. okay and and um, and one of the reasons of having a discussion like we did a few minutes ago is that we have something on the record we have some minutes saying you know ideally this is this is what we're looking for but the village would be um, the approver, the arbiter of that, correct? And we're recommending as much screening as possible on three sites and non deciduous. Well, right. Uh, to, to Greg's point, does it just make sense to maybe have like some words of wisdom or a guideline that you provide to the owners that just has like, you know, a minimum standard? as to what you're seeking so that you don't, you know, end up having to re-engineer it after the fact. I don't think that anybody's going to go into it with bad intentions. I think they understand what screening is, but in the absence of saying something, you could be having additional conversations down the road and people have spent money and resources to, you know, pay for the screening because we're talking about plants and different things. I mean, I kind of think we should just say something like a uh, non-deciduous planting, parentheses, evergreen, that reaches a mature height of... 75% I mean, is a good... Yeah, because I mean, like, problem with, like, you know, boxwoods are great, right? They're evergreens, but you can have the petite ones that mature height at two feet, and then you can have the hedge ones that mature at 12 to 15. Yeah. And I mean, we wouldn't want somebody to put up the petite ones thinking that they're going to do the job of actually providing screening exactly. for the structure. So I think something with a, a guideline on mature height would be useful, especially when people are going to a nursery and picking out plants. Well, I think um, y uh, you just mentioned that that's part of the code as far as screening for commercial vans, a 75% height. It okay. is, yes, and when we can... Um, uh, we can we can make it the same, I guess, for this as well, 75% of the height of the shed. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and of course, plants and have to grow into that. So well, that's that's fair enough, right? So. Yeah, that's why I think a reference to mature height would be beneficial for anybody that's going to select something for planting. Good so idea. On the tag. Good idea. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the I'd like to um, somebody to propose a motion that we recommend to the board that we approve this petition for a special use and for variance uh, for the property located 1704 West 65th Place on the condition that uh, appropriate screening 
uh, be installed um, as soon as possible or practicable, and that the payment be made to the village, and that the screening adhere to uh, some guidelines as discussed tonight, meaning um, approximately 75% eventually um, the, uh, screening on three sides. Did we cover everything in that? Okay, does somebody wanna uh, make that motion? Um, I'm happy to make the motion, but I cannot repeat <laughs> I everything can't. that you just said, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Danielle makes the motion. Any second? I'll second. Okay. And um, all in favor of um, this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 But Bob. Commissioner Tindall. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, very good. Now, we'll move on to our next public hearing for the property located at 1624 West 65th Place. And our petitioner is Gerald Matthews. Good evening. Good evening. How good are evening. you? I'm doing great. Good. Learned a lot already. Yeah, we did too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Gerald Matthews, uh, 1624, 65th place. Uh, I have a uh, three-bedroom frame, Bartlett home, uh, wood frame construction. Uh, we're on a half-acre lot. Uh, we have an attached garage, no basement, and a crawl space in the attic. That's about it. Uh, I have a, a metal storage shed in the backyard. It measures 10 feet wide, eight, and eight feet eight inches long, and uh, six feet eight inches tall at the peak. It has a rock and gravel combined floor. It's surrounded <clears throat> by evergreens, uh, deciduous shrubs, and some tall growing perennials that right now they're gone, but. In the summer, they're like clematis and other kinds of tall growing perennials. <clears throat> uh, the shed is used entirely for my lawn maintenance and garden maintenance equipment, including like a, <clears throat> a riding a lawn tractor with a 42 inch deck, a snow blower, weed eater, push mower, leaf blower, lawn furniture, and a chipper shredder. Got a lot of stuff in that shit. <laughs> but uh, since we do have a half acre lot with no basement, uh, no other place to storage, there's no room in our garage, not only with the car, but with all kinds of my wife's boxes. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, <clears throat> lived there, purchased the home, moved in in 1979. We've Shortly thereafter, we had to put, I had to build something to store some of my equipment. So we put up the shed 42 years ago. It's been there that long. I do maintain it. I do paint it periodically, uh, but it's held up beautifully. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Indian Head Park does provide or require, you know, proper care of your property to make it, the appearance look good, and uh, I feel that I need that shed to properly keep my equipment in order to maintain the property, the appearance of the property we have. So basically that's my story. Uh, I respectfully request approval of a, a special use permit slash variance. Okay. And you uh, got the signatures from your neighbors. I did. Very good. Yep. Oh, I meant, yeah, there's another thing. I said during that 42 years, we've had different property owners on both sides of us. Never once has anybody complained in the whole neighborhood about our shed. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, questions or comments, commissioners? Is this one within the buildable area? How close to the property line is it? It is. Well... It, it is in the buildable area. It is, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, is, uh, they have to leave 40% of the, 
Uh, isn't that right? The forty yeah. percent of the the area has to be not built upon in the back, and it looks like does it have the ten feet or on the, the side yard setbacks. on the side yard? What yeah, yeah. The shed on on the drawing I think is a little draw, it's drawn a little bit further right than it is. Okay. Um, so yeah, it it is in the buildable area. Okay. Um, since we have uh, an existing structure that has uh, some screening there, any comments on the screening? F just for discussion purposes, we don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but just uh, so we have a better feel of our uh, ideas. So um, I'm looking at the two pictures that were provided in the packet, and um, I can see on one side there is a fairly large evergreen of some sort, and the, the head-on picture... Um, I can't really tell, but you said there's there is an evergreen on on that side of the structure as well. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Directly in front, there's a little tree that kind of. Yeah, I can see that from the picture. Right. So then I guess my question is, um, on the photo where we're kind of looking at it from a distance on the side, um, it appears that the back and perhaps the rear quarter panel of the shed um, have, I think, what you probably refer to as like a clematis yeah. or a Correct. something like that. So um, maybe the question for the bigger team is, so are we going to find things like, um, like those acceptable for screening? like? I think for sheds that have been there 42 years, I don't know, there could be something, <laughs> but I agree. Like, the, well, come no, into I'm just, point. I'm just asking for consistency purposes because I wouldn't want to, s you know, according to the conversation we just had, right, 75%. That, that, per, that section of the shed might need some additional planting, mm -hmm. but I think it's worth having the conversation to see if it's applicable to this particular I guess, too, what's not. on the back side of it because we can't see that. Right, I can't but, see the back of um, it either. Um, so I mean like the trellis, right? I mean, I know we've talked about trellises many times. Um. Well, since we talked about, you know, non-deciduous and evergreen and things right. like that, w I think it's not preferred. Right, right. So what, what is on the, the back portion of your shed? <coughs> yeah, you don't have a picture of the back, but behind the shed, there's a, I have a <coughs> uh, arbor, uh, a 10 Arbor. And on this arbor, I have a uh, hummingbird vine that I planted 15 years ago. I don't know if you know a hummingbird vine. Not a trumpet vine, right? Not evergreen, but in the summer, yep. it's loaded with leaves, and these little orange uh, flowers come out, and the hummingbirds go and suck the sap. Oh. So that's behind, directly behind the shed. Behind that arbor, row of arborvita that have been there at least 50 years. They're probably 30, 40 feet tall. So that's screening the whole back of the property line. So you got the 40, 30, 40 foot arborvitas and then you have the arbor with the hummingbird vine that completely covers a 10 by 10 foot by 10 foot arbor. So the, the back is pretty well screened. Yeah, yeah, but it's screened from any viewing from anybody. I think that's acceptable. My my under my interpretation of the ordinance passed by the board is that the um, the greatest importance is, is just to screen it. Uh, you know, and ideally, I it, it would be I guess close closer to it. But I think, as in the case of Mr. Matthews, while it may not meet that seventy five percent criteria up next to the shed. I, I don't think it's it's viewable from from the adjacent properties and mm -hmm. and I see there's also you see some bushes kind of near the property line as well so I I think I mean, it's, again it's uh, it's up to the commission but to to me I would say this is probably pretty well screened yeah yeah I think a a little more of this and a little less of that is you know kind of how we have to view these things in, in this case as well I know. 
at the end of our list, I believe, is your neighbor directly to the east. Um, that tall, continuous hedge that runs in between your properties, and then it turns and it shields yours from view from the front. Is that on your property? Who, whose property is that? It is, okay, okay. Right. Sitting on either side of it. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a situation where two neighbors right next to each other are sort of, you know, the solution that sh that's shielding both of them from view is actually belongs to one of the property owners. I mean, the issue would, in the future that could occur would be you sell your house, someone decides, oh, I don't like those hedges, and they go get rid of them, and then all of a sudden, you know, so that, that's a situation where, you know, that this is, this is where we get into the every condition mm -hmm. is unique, you know, that, that, that hedge is there, and it's healthy, and it's doing, it's serving its purpose. If it were ever to go away, there would then be an issue in the future that both of the sheds wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be um, shielded from view anymore. Understood. But in this case, I do. You know, it's it's the, the the shed we're talking about right now is is very well shielded from view from the street and from the rear, from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. Looking at the aerial image, yeah, I think that like this corner we're looking at, you can only see if you're back in the yard there. I mean, you can you see it from the neighbors. <coughs> yeah. um, any questions from? Commissioners, um, Andy, or Andy, for future, can you have the petitioners snap a picture of their house, just so we can get a sense of the construction and color of the house? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, you, you know, and actually, I, I just to make it easier on the petitioners, we'll village staff will just we can go online and get a picture of all the homes that have applied. So yeah, we will we will have those for the future petitions. And just to confirm, the current home is a single car or a double car garage? A double. It's a double. Um, I think the findings of fact are pretty much identical, this property to our last petition. I can't imagine any, any changes from that. Um, any further discussion? Then for this property, uh, for this petition, uh, I would entertain a motion that um, we as a commission recommend to the board that this petition for um, special use be approved for the property at 1624 West 65th Place on the condition you keep the screening in place, looks pretty good, and that you make the payment to the village for the, um, the bulk mailings. Anybody want to make that motion? I'll move. Dan, and any second? Second. Justin seconds. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to the next uh, petition, which is the property at 6537. Laurel Avenue, and correct, not tonight. No, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, we. Uh, yeah, I know it's confusing. I unfortunate for procedure purposes, we technically have to open them all up, to open the hearings tonight, but they won't actually be heard until um, future meetings. Yes. So vill village staff, we will be reaching out to you. Uh, we'll give you a call, or if we'll 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 we'll, make, we'll get into contact with you somehow uh, to set up. Uh, uh, to set you up for whatever meeting. It, might, it could be next month or 
um, the ne- the month after. So, but we'll, we'll village staff will reach out to you. No, no, no problem. Good question. Maybe we should uh, mention that. <laughs> um, okay, our next petitioner is um, is Mr. Ryan Pinkos, and you have um, you are looking for a special use permit for a shed, a detached structure that you are will are looking to build yes. or or erect. And um, and you've gathered signatures from your neighbors, and you brought you submitted a survey. Yes. Okay. Tell us what you're looking for. Um, what we're going to do is, um, depending on whether we're going to do concrete or a solid foundation, like the others have. Either or, it's it's going to look nice, and we just want to put it up and start storage before winter, hopefully. Did you purchase it yet, or you? Yeah, it's it's laying in the garage. It's in the garage in a box. And that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. And tell us uh, the structure of your home. It's uh, blue vinyl. It's a nice, like, light blue vinyl uh, with, like, white shutters and new, like, grayish roof. Okay. And are you on a slab? Yes, I'm on a slab as well. And single or double garage? It's a single garage. I think it it was a single uh, garage, but when they uh, rehabbed it, they kind of knocked down a wall a little bit and made the garage a little bit bigger, but it's, it's still... Yeah, yeah. yeah, one uh, intended for one car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's in the buildable area uh, behind your house and to the... It's a little bit off to the side. So it's mm-hmm. like so like when you're like taking the lawnmower in and out, it's, mm-hmm. you're not going right into the, ho- the house. Yeah. Do you have any questions on the screening we've been talking about you tonight? You know what? I'm just going to put something green up and just hopefully everyone's happy. And something if not, nice and we'll, tall and... We'll make it happen. Yeah. Simple as that. Great. Um... Any questions, any thoughts from Mr. Pincus? I'm sorry, what's the dimensions again? That's, uh, I think that's... Oh, 8 by 12 and a half. By so you're half. just a little hair too long, but, but you're short too, on the other yeah, way, so but... Was, hopefully if the square footage falls yeah. within, I, you know, hope for the best. If yeah. not, we could always uh, do what we got to do. Uh, any objection to that, commissioners? I, I'm looking at your, your plat of survey and then... The, Based on looking at the aerial, it looks as though the concrete patio area in the back of your house has been expended. No, more. it's it's kind of. There, I guess there used to be a, like a three season room there or something like that, and they knocked that down. Now it's just a slab there, and then that's kind of where we're gonna have that uh, shed. It's gonna be right next to that shed or to the slab, and then they extended our uh, on the other side of the house is where they did the addition at. Oh, I see. Yeah, the yeah. whole shape of it is actually a yeah. little bit different. So I'm just, this is a situation, I guess, where we're talking about a new shed so it can be placed and oriented, you know, can, yeah, in the way that's sort of least impactful um, well, I, like to, your, to your neighbor directly. I, is it to the north? It'd be to the north. But my my backyard's like the little redhead schoolhouse. It's surrounded by, I got pear trees, raspberries, I got... It's all surrounded by trees, pretty much. Um, unless you, if you go to the, in my driveway, you could kind of you'll be able to see it. But there's, it's all surrounded. So in this case, the, I mean, what you'd want to be able to do this is this is one where I guess we need to sort of determine how we feel about how it's oriented. Your plan is to orient it to yeah, the front. Yeah, there's like that little slot right there, and then I could put it right in front, so I'll have ease of getting the equipment in and out, like snow mobi- like snow blowers and lawn lawn mowers. But whatever you guys want, you know, give me a suggestion, and uh, we can make it work. I mean, it's going to be particularly important to screen it on the side where your there, na- there your is, neighbors there is basically tre- looking there is trees straight right at there. it, right? There is trees right there, and uh, those neighbors uh, we spoke to them. Okay. And, uh, but I'm just I'm wondering whether there's a there's a way to configure it so that you're able to screen it from view from the front. Like oh, the, the front. Door is okay, not so I'm about front. maybe like three feet above the street. You're, you're going up, and then I also have a I have like a line of trees right here. So unless you're going into my driveway, you're, that's that's when you're that's when you're going to see it. But when you're just going down the road, you're not going to see it from the front of my house. No. Oh, I see, because your driveway goes up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Okay, steep. I'm trying to, I'm not sure this is the best, this is the Google Street View. <laughs> but yeah, this is why it'd be helpful, I think, for us to, 
handy to you know to sort of see a head-on view of the house so that we can evaluate because um, it, it will be visible from the street and that's why I'm wondering whether but I, I could um there's those trees there and then uh, I'll plant I'll plant whatever needs to get planted it's so where are the trees like I'm, I'm looking at uh, the survey. can I step up idea. there I don't yeah, know yeah yeah that'd be great and maybe hold it up and show all of us um, there's trees all along this property line for other neighbors. There's uh, maybe a good, I don't know, 30 feet of trees back here. And there's a, a pear tree right here. And there's a row of trees right here. And there's like two trees right here. So I can plant all the way around. So there's trees, my whole, there's trees all down this line. Okay, here's your property line, right? Yes. And so there's trees all along here. No, that's, I'm zooming in too early. Yeah, there's trees all the way down there. Okay, right. and, and in the back you got trees. trees. That's not important. And all there's trees as well. So there's trees between the property line and the... Um, at that particular spot, it's not as many trees, but we could, uh, we're going to make clearance lanes there. Okay. Yeah, but there's still, like, it's just not, you can see through. Okay. You know, it's not a complete blindness of vision. Okay. You can see through it. Here. And so will the front door of the shed be facing the street? Yes. Okay. So you will, you will do and the I other would, three I would, sides. I would put trees right here too, so no one can see everything. I see. Uh huh. Instead of putting trees in front of the door, I'll put it in the beginning of my driveway. Uh huh. So no one's going to be able to see. Yeah, and then that's where the door is, so you can't shut the door or you can't shield the door. And again, uh -huh. like I said, uh, I'm open to suggestions. Whatever makes life easier for everyone. Good. Generally. Andy, do you know side yard setback? I don't have the calculation right now. The, the uh, side yard is a side, total of 25 yard? feet oh. with a minimum of 10. So if there's 10 on one side, it has to be 15 on the other. Or, you know, some combination, total 25. Yep. It's late. Huh? It's late. I can't <laughs> do that math. <laughs> So I guess is the proposed shed structure going to be um, meet the parameters of the side yard setbacks? As, as Our, it trucks, I don't know, but as far we, as trees we, being we, around everything, 100%. Um, but it passed our line. inspection. Yeah, it, it, it should be good. <laughs> you know, the, the drawing, the, yeah, on, you know, the drawings on here are, are, are they're all hand drawn, so they're a little bit more... I th you know, uh, we everyone. Sure, though, that yeah, when and we'll, we'll do exactly right. when because we before you yeah. issue a permit. Uh, yeah, it's uh, either in compliance exactly. or we have to approve it. And that's another. Uh, that's another thing I should mention is so these sheds, a lot of them will have to go through. They might have to get a building permit if it's it's a bit more. And either way, we'll be doing the inspections for screening, so we'll we'll make sure that they are everything is everything is compliant. So okay. So uh, it, would, it would look as though, I mean, according to this, and I'm having a little hard time reading it, the, the side, the existing setback there is 14.2 feet, if I'm reading it correctly, from the property line. The, the requirement, if, if the shed is sitting within the buildable area to right. avoid needing a variance, it needs to be at least 10 feet from the property line, which would allow 10 feet for getting around it and built in and shielding it with landscaping or whatever if, if for some reason the neighbor had nothing to shield it you would have 10 feet to work with yes I believe right? it's like three feet right now where I want that shed I think it's you're gonna have three feet between my my neighbor's property line and then the shed so there's okay see that wouldn't be within the buildable right. area that would be improper yeah so in in that case yeah. then yeah we would Either you could grant the variance, or would you be comfortable with just moving it a little more to the left? Or I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't move it to the left because that'd destroy my whole backyard setting. I would gotcha. have to find. I probably just put it, you know, uh, wherever you guys decide. Uh, essentially, whatever works. Give me a couple suggestions, and then we're gonna have to make uh, things happen. But ideally, that's where I would uh, where I would like it. Okay. But any more to the left, it would just be. Because you need the door to, you need, you need that, the door and then that we, whole our, 10 our patio, feet. We have all new fresh concrete in the back, and then we have our sitting area and everything like that. To have, to have the shed right there, it would kind of break, uh, break up the atmosphere. Okay, we got an issue here then to solve here. 
Mm-hmm. And so you want to be able to come in that side of the house and go right into the door of your shed. Well, I have no door in. on this, that side of the house. It's just a, a garage. Uh, just the entrance to the shed will be facing the the, the street. street. Yes. So you and, and you want to come in the side of the, the house. The side of the house to pull the lawnmower yeah. in and out. Instead of the side of the house and then turn to come into the. Correct. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Andy? My my recommendation would be, um, I mean, I think it's up to the commission. I I think if you if it's a concern of yours that it is too, yeah, I guess I, so. I guess it, this one would be in the we be, uh, too we need far. A variance. He, he would need a variance. I, I I think that the intent of the of the board is that they're pretty open to granting variance and special use. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as the property, the adjacent property owners are okay with it, which they are. Um, but I, this is, I think, really a policy mm-hmm. call on for the board and also for the commission. Mm-hmm. So one more time, how many feet are we talking about here? Um, th- we're, they're only th- uh, approximately three feet from the line, and it's, it's supposed to be a minimum of 10 from the side, r- side yard line. And could you just walk me through... Why that's a policy? Because I'm not. It's a, I'm that's not the buildable with. area, you know, where we say you can't build. And the purpose of that is so that you're not too close to your neighbors, so the houses aren't on top of each other. Uh, so I can see a rationale for granting a variance. Well, if like a fire truck needed to get through there or something for whatever reason, you have to have clearance. For I I don't and think just just and uh, I'd, like, I'd like to ask um, one more time on your first name. Ryan. Ryan. Yes. Um, the trees that separate you from your neighbor, See, how high are they? They're, they're, they're like 15 feet. But my right. neighbor, he's on that corner lot right there. So his backyard is maybe, his back door is maybe 15 feet from that property, from our property line. And his yard is essentially on the side of his house. So that's kind of his layout. So he's like this, and then we're right here. So and also that shed would be ideal for us because it kind of gives us our privacy from mm-hmm. him and mm-hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And then there is a trees there, but like I said, there's a lot of daylight that goes through there. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you hear the noises, hear the kids, the dogs and stuff. So on that side, uh, your neighbor, there's, there's no structures there for quite a few feet. What do you mean? Uh, On the other side, on, on your neighbor's side of the shed. There is, uh, there's, there's like trees, there's going to be trees there and there's trees right there. And there's also the big branches are just like, yeah. I'm thinking of your safety issue, but there's nothing stopping people from planting trees in those areas, you know, the buildable areas. True. Yeah, I, the, you know, the intent of the zoning code in regards to the buildable area is it, twofold. It, it's primarily to keep to keep you from building right up next to your uh, neighbor, and also as far as the the rear yard setback. Uh, it, it's again not to build up too close, but also Indian Head Park's zoning code is much more stringent than other municipalities because of the desire to have that the the park the park like atmosphere and open backyards. So, uh, but in regards to the actual uh, construction up t- up until your neighbor's property, I think that in a in a situation like we have here where the neighbors have said they, that they don't have an issue. Uh, it, it does make it a, st- a stronger case for granting the variance as well, mm-hmm. um, especially based off of the uh, the language and, and the intent of the shed ordinance and uh, passed by the board. So, mm-hmm. do you do you believe that your interpretation is consistent with how the village council saw it when they talked about this? I th- I think it is. I don't I don't want to speak for all of them. Um, we we do have a few here if they would like. Uh, it's Mr. Eck uh, has given the thumbs up. So is uh, Trustee Farrell Mayor. So I would say so. Yeah. Okay. So do we have to amend the petition to state um, y- variation? Yeah. If you would, you could. Yes, we can just. You can. Um, in the motion, just recommend a special okay. use and a variance. I so. Okay. I think my I mean, the way I'm. <sighs> coming down on this is that, you know, as a commission, we need to take situations like this pretty seriously and, you know, and fulfill the intent of 
the ordinance, and I, I'm not inclined to approve a variance for this. I think there's a wide open backyard. There are places a shed could be placed within the buildable area and shielded from view. It could be oriented a different way. It could be located a different way. I don't, I don't see a hardship here that would warrant, you know, approving putting this three feet from the property line when the adjacent homeowner's home is only 15 feet from the property line. Um, but that you was get my along question. Well with your neighbor now, but you, you may have a different neighbor. I mean, but neighbor the, we, we are going to put trees there, regardless. The fact that it's still going to be covered by trees, as intended, as as the as you know the law no, states. The question is, how far is your neighbor's built uh, home from his lot land? Find the lot line. Um, I don't know. It may be at least the length of this uh, this uh, room right here. Like I said, I'm I'm a, I'm a machinist. I'm not very good with uh, yeah yards and what yeah. have you. Is that metric guy? Yes. <laughs> I, I guess I, I mean I appreciate the fact that you want to use the space, you know, as you would like it. Yeah. And I think the one thing that just triggers a question is that it hasn't been built yet, which unfortunately for you yeah. differentiates you a little bit from people that have had their, you know, sheds for forty two years. No. So I, I guess see the, some like that's one thing I never want to say. Oh, this person has that. That person has right. that. That's no, not why I, I am. I, I there is some very nice setups that are exactly kind of how I want to do in the neighborhood. So it's not like it's going to be a one-off thing. There's there's very nice setups that I intend on having it look like that that are in that neighborhood. But but the point the, the point I'm trying to make is since it hasn't been built, I just wonder is there any other location on the property since you haven't put anything up yet that this could be worked that would actually like take away from the park like structure of the of the yard anywhere in that in that backyard do you put it right in the center or to the sides over there it's good it would take away from the park like uh of the neighbor of the area so ryan is this time sensitive i would uh, ideally before you know before uh winter but you know i'm at your guys's grace so it is what it is so in light of the potential of a variance would you it's uh, you've got it all up here we don't have the benefit of understanding yeah how your yard works and and your vision and we don't want to interfere with that um, however we again we we can't visualize what you can could you come back would you be open to coming back and, and, and educating us on, on your existence? I'll be willing, yes, I'll be willing to take photos and come back at a different time, and that's it's gonna be what's Because I, I think we're- I would I rather wait the six we're, months, we're, we're I'd rather there. wait the six months to have the shed where I kind of want it, than just to like give up and just put it anywhere now. So I'd rather go through the extra effort to uh, get it, try to get it there. And if not, it is what it is. We'll put it somewhere I, else I think, I think I think we're, we're there. We'll definitely work with you. I mean, we're, yeah. we'll find something that works. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll I think a, a better a better diagram of sort of what the, the, this plan of survey doesn't really reflect. Yeah, no, uh, next there time now, let me know. I'll, I'll send photos. I'll, I'll yeah. submit them to, uh, you know, your uh, guys' people, and we'll, we'll make it happen. We're going to do sort of a path yeah. connection and, re and landscaping and all of that so we feel more comfortable. As long as I have to pay the extra $700, yeah, I mean, no. you know what, I'm, I'm okay. You know, that's, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, I, uh, if, the, if the commission wants to... Um, continue this one tomorrow tomorrow i'll give you a call and we can we can talk it through and sounds good figure it out thank you for your time okay we'll continue Any, this thank you I, I, Any, the variance is there a whole nother set of notices that need to go out or probably probably and what's the statutory duration for notices so when whenever it would it would require there would there would have to be a notice um for for the hearing for the variance as well so we we would probably have to send out another notice and that's 30 days yes yes we, we could get it out in time no of or the the amount of time before you have to send them out is that what you're asking no i just want to make i just I'm, I'm hoping we can preserve the ability for ryan to come back in december i we if, can if we, we can because if we continue the hearing 
it's the hearing technically started We're tonight. We're hearing a variance tonight. Yeah, that that is the tricky part. That I think we will have to. I'll I'll I. I, I we'll have to refer, refer to our attorney to make sure, but I, I think we might have to send out. Yeah, the, John, do you John. know? It's between 15 and 30 days, so we'll have time to get it for the December meeting. Okay. So I think, Ryan, the, the, you know, make sure you want a variance. If you want a variance, come back and put a, put a case in front of us that we can all support and get behind. And when the next guy comes and wants to encroach on the setback, we can point to why you were different or why the, he has the exact same circumstances as you do um but at the same time i don't want to just automatically assume you're going to get a variance so i would challenge you to see if there's another location in your yard that well, maybe it could work over there and it's still in the setback so i'll give you guys what my vision is and then also other what would it look like at other places so i'll give you guys i have a full uh, gallery of photos of my backyard and everything yeah that would be helpful be great Okay, we'll continue that till next month, and hopefully we'll be on track for that. Okay, our next hearing is for um, the petition at 1614 West 65th Place. Uh, this is for a special use, and this is Mr. and Mrs. Giacomelli. Hello. Hi, Melissa Giacomelli. Uh, sorry, thank you, Giacomelli. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, my house is pretty much the same as my neighbors that I already had spoke um, this evening, and I'm on a slab, two-car garage, but you get the two cars in there and bikes and stuff. So my shed, or my house is cedar siding, and my shed matches cedar siding, same color with uh, light tan with dark um, brown trim. Um, and it is screened with the bushes like you can see in the photos that I sent uh, next to Jerry. So I've got the whole hedge going down the property and then over. So you really can't even see the shed from the street except for the little peak of it. But those do grow pretty tall, but we do keep them maintained. The shed gets stained just as much as the house does. Every few years it's been stained and kept up. And the shed was there when we moved in about 30 years ago. So we assumed <laughs> that it wasn't an issue because when we bought the property, it was on the property. Uh -huh. Um, and so maintaining a half acre yard, you have riding lawn mowers, push mowers, hedgers for all those bushes, electric gas, you know, trimming. There's just a lot of uh, yard equipment because we don't yes. have a landscaper. So that's what's in the shed. And I put flower boxes on the side because it does space inside my yard. And I do have a lot of decorative shrubs and flowers that I do. So it does match my house. Um, um. And your neighbors uh, signed a petition yes. saying no problem. And, um, okay, let me see. Okay. This is the one where you just creep that one. But there's the, this is the hedge. And I guess for uh, consistency's sake, uh, sure. based on what we just talked about is where is the shed in relationship to the property line? Um, and my husband drew it on the plot of survey. I think it's in the buildable area from what he had said when he was measuring out. Like the street. Yeah, I see the dimensions being eight by eight, but I, yeah, eight it doesn't, eight. it doesn't yeah. say how far it is from the property line. That's oh, just. Um, I thought he put it on there, and I'm pretty sure it's in the buildable this, area. This hedge. Okay. I'll I'll say on this one I I actually I just so happened to be in the neighborhood today for another thing and so I actually went around and looked at it and and t and to me it looks like it's far enough into the buildable area yeah. so I, I, this one I don't think is outside of it or I mean there's a small chance it could be like a foot outside of it but I don't think that's outside of the in intent of the of the zoning code that, so that tall hedgerow is on your property that's my you bushes, said right yes, yeah right. so that's in part of your setback keeping, um, yeah i don't think there's right, a buildable Jerry, area I'm up there them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what <laughs> i have enough to take care of about that can because it goes around my whole property <laughs> We make it a condition of the approval. That's right. Yeah, can't she we? She comes over to your side and gets yours. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but it's your site. You want that shed, Terry? <laughs> no, I think so. I have right here. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Noreen, if I could just. So, we just went through a line of questioning about how far a shed's going to be from a property line. And we're going to start deciding on a lot of these moving forward. And from the feedback that was given to us earlier, it seems like the village council is considering not just the existing structures, but things, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Mm -hmm. So in fairness to the gentleman who just came in here, we, we do need to ask that question. Like we, we need to be mindful of the fact that whether it's new or whether it's 40 years old, if it's too close to that property line, we need to have a discussion about a variance. Huh? Would that be an accurate assessment? Yeah, we would probably give a little bit more credence to somebody who, who's, if it's been there for a long time, True. instead of asking I, them to take it down. But I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that for sure. I'm just trying to like, you know, just make sure that as we move forward, we need to just do our diligence on right. that question. We want to be consistent. Because most people that are going to be doing it in the future, they're going to be building new stuff. So it's, um, and you know, people do design their yards in a way that has a certain vision for how they want to live. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we need to be consistent across all designs, whether they've been there 40 years or, you know, one year and obviously try to be as nimble as we can for what's existing. I, I accept that, but yeah. we should ask the question. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do we know how far this is from the property line? We don't know. Not dimensioned. No, I thought he wrote that on there. Hmm. I I don't have it. when I did the initial um, research. What well, you could say, I I didn't do it on this. I looked at it online with with the uh, Cook County viewer. It's pretty nice. You can draw out feet and stuff like that. So, and especially after tonight with the discussion about the the. The bushes along that being your property, I, I'm pretty confident this is in the in the buildable area. Okay. So we we don't have the issue yeah. with variance. Okay. Is this home on a slab as well? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, any other questions or concerns? And how long did you say it was there before you bought? Huh? Yeah, we've been there almost 30 years, and it was there when we moved in. So. Well, look, it looks in very good shape. Yeah, we take care of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very good, yeah. Um, any questions? Anybody have any discussion? I, I think it's relevant here that you know this one is it's smaller in size. It's only eight by eight. Right. Um, it it does not in, uh, encroach. Um, it, you know, it's within the buildable area. It doesn't encroach on the side setback, and it's completely screened from view from the front. Right. from the street, yes, from the street you and from your neighbor, which is really the intent. I mean, our, our interest is in making sure that how it's, how it's viewed from the street and neighboring properties right. is taken into consideration. You obviously want to hide it around the corner where you don't have to look at it, right. but, That's where the, but right. you don't want to end up in a situation where your neighbor <laughs> right. and everybody right. driving by has to look at it. So yeah. it's, a, it's a compromise. Um, in this case, I think it fulfills the intent of being hidden from view you know, and, not, and not being... Um, an issue for anyone else. You're just sort of lucky that you got a little corner sure, where you can, right, you know, it, it's tucked in there, and it was there when you, right. when you purchased the house. Um, I will, I will say, I mean, this, the, your house is pretty significant in size, and you do have a two-car garage. I don't know that if you hadn't bought the house 30 years ago with it sitting there already. I wouldn't necessarily be inclined to have, you know, someone in a similar situation saying I. I'd like to have a shed because my two-car garage just isn't big enough. I don't know that we'd be terribly sympathetic to that because it's not really a plight in the sense that, you know, it's a, it, it's, it's not a hardship to only have a two-car garage. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, but we um, put our garbage cans in the shed. And the yeah, filled, so... so um, in consideration of sort of, you know, whether someone would be where it would be warranted to have a new shed, I would be inclined to take that into consideration, whether there's already a two-car garage um, and whether there's a way, is there a place to put it like you have where 
it's not going to be um, obvious to anyone else that it's there. Um, those would be two things I would I would think about. I think I think it's a relevant consideration whether homes have a one car garage or a two car garage when we're thinking about approving sheds that don't exist already, mm -hmm. um, so that people do have a place to you know to to protect their lawn equipment from the weather. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm inclined to to go ahead and approve this one because I think it's the, the way it's placed and the way it's hidden. It's not a it's not a problem for anyone, but um, I just want to be clear that's not necessarily how we I think how we would view a new shed in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I just received confirmation from John that um, after double checking, it it is in the buildable area. So this is. yes, that's excellent. Fine. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I also, I, but we should be in the you know, position to decide what's enough space for who either. I mean, we, we are the zoning, you know, and planning and zoning committee, we're not deciding if, oh, you have too much. I mean, so we have to take that into consideration when we're talking amongst ourselves to not, we're not the people who decide who is enough, who doesn't, I mean. Right, just to maintain these big yards, you need a lot of equipment. <laughs> right. Especially True. when you've got a lot of landscaping to take care of. Yeah, it's a big difference between the families that do their own yard work Correct. and families right. that um, don't own a lawnmower. <laughs> right, right, to keep in you know, consideration. If they are doing it their self, you have to have a rider, you have a push for all the little corners, the yeah. ditches, and then depending on how much landscaping they have around, you know, trimming bushes, but there's a lot of equipment that comes with these yards. Yep. I understand. Think about I know. I just know what we have to maintain what we have. It's a lot. Right. Um, I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, unless there's further discussion, I'd like to entertain a motion that uh, we recommend to the board to uh, approve the petition for uh, special use uh, for the property at 1614 West 65th Street on the condition that, uh, well, it's already screened pretty well, you maintain um, appropriate screening, and that you make the payment to the village for the bulk mailing. Would anybody like to make that motion? I'm happy to make that motion. Okay, Danielle and second. Anybody second? I'll second. Dan seconds. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, and congratulations. Okay. Um, so at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we continue the hearings for the, I don't have to read all these addresses, do I? <laughs> for, for the listed these, addresses. For, for the remaining addresses listed on our agenda tonight. Um, would anybody like to make that motion? Make a motion to continue. I'll make the motion to continue okay. the listed addresses Any to the next meeting. <laughs> second. And Justin, second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any public comments? Any anything for discussion? Yep. Okay. The crime is getting worse in this town. I know you don't see it that much. We all don't, but they do. That's why we do need to shed. Just keep, I mean, just, you know, in the back of your mind somewhere, always think, we want the car in the garage because they break into them no matter how you lock them. You know, because I see a lot of neighborhood beat and all that stuff and, you know, I mean, stupid people the other day putting the candy and leaving it and, le you know, that's gonna happen, kids, but you know what I'm saying? So that's an issue. Mm -hmm. And I know Old Town too, and we had the meetings about it. People saying all the cars are in the driveway because they open the garage door and it's full. You know, we all got furniture like that now that yeah. you can't take apart. Yeah. So those are issues, but okay. that's the main thing too is the crime. You might have two car garage, two cars in there, where she gonna put everything else? Yeah. Because nobody wants to keep, I don't, you know, yeah. keep my car out anymore, so. It's a good point. Right. Thank you, thank you for that. Any other so, comments? I, just a question for Andy. Um, I, apologies if this got, addressed at a meeting I wasn't at, but I noticed on this list, there are, no, there are no addresses on Osceola Trail or Cochise Drive, and there are 
many homes on uh, there that have sheds that yes. are very far out of the buildable area. So I'm wondering what's the status with so the So the plan is to get through these first okay. and, then, and then address those. Okay. Because so. those, I think, are situations, too, where they, some of them are causing flooding issues for their neighbors. So yeah, we'll bring I, I don't think that it. is an issue, really, with any of the properties over in the Bartlett subdivision it's there aren't that there is honestly drainage issues that sh that sheds are yeah exacerbating okay we'll be on this for a while huh <laughs> okay does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn okay second second okay Greg and Dan, all in favor, signify by aye. 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 Okay, motion uh, carried, and see you next month. <laughs>